a pleasure to have you in the talk here. Perfect. Thank you so Perfect. much. Thank you. So much. Thank, Thank you so much for inviting us. We've been enjoying all of your talks, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it somehow uh, became a little bit bigger, let's say, than uh, expected, like for, uh, doing the, the quarantine thing and uh, more and more people getting in, get interested in our do it like every week, two, three times, depending. Yeah. So, uh, it's a... Uh, it's it's a great chance to give a, a broad view uh, to everyone, like artists, galleries, uh, curators, uh, auction houses, and uh, it's it's very very nice. And thank you so much for joining tonight. Uh, it's a huge pleasure. Uh, well, congratulations! You know this is really awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, thank you. It's always thank you like so that. Much. You start with an idea and then it takes off. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Great, great, great. Uh, okay, yes, uh, we already have a lot of people. Um, okay, tonight, uh, Addis Fainat from uh, Addis Ababa in uh, Ethiopia, uh, with and um, it, uh, contemporary African art gallery uh, with locations in London and in, uh, in Addis Ababa, as I said. And um, we will start a little bit. Um, can you maybe both introduce yourself a little bit? How did you get into uh, open the gallery back in 2016? Um, what was the idea behind, and what is the uh, the yeah the main idea behind the gallery? Sure. Yes, yeah. Um. So, I, Masai and I met um, around eight years ago. So, I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of people know a little bit about how um, our history. But um, eight mm -hmm. years ago, this idea for um, Addis Fine Arts became kind of this little seedling. You know, we wanted to see more of, of um, Ethiopian uh, contemporary art. Mm -hmm. um, in in the, the kind of the, the global discourse we were both mm -hmm. collectors i was kind of like a baby collector at that time masai was somebody that has done um a lot uh, when i met him and you know he became my mentor and mm -hmm. eight years ago we kind of decided that something needed to be done to kind of bring some of these things that we uh, hold dear and that we know um out into the open i mean mm -hmm. the gallery didn't open until four years later and yeah. it took a lot of um, kind of, you know, soul searching, kind of figuring out like the best methods or the best way to kind of work together and also um, uh, create some sort of platform. We really didn't know what it was going to be until uh, it, it all kind of became an incremental kind of uh, step up uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, um, I might have been in this a little bit longer than Raquel. Um Believe it or not, I had a gallery in Los Angeles, but that's way back when. And oh, um, wow. make a long story short, you know, <laughs> me and Raquel uh, met, uh, like she said, about eight years ago. And the whole idea was, you know, uh, this underrepresentation of Ethiopian artists, you know, from this continent, being yeah. part of the global um, art uh, culture, art uh, market, art discourse. So that was lacking, and um, and we felt like. You know, we were positioned better than anyone else, at least at that moment, you know, to to come together and uh, yeah. and be able, you know, to take this, you know, globally. So it's been uh, quite a journey for the last four and a half years, <laughs> to say the wow. least. Great, great, yes, great. Yes, absolutely. And since you both are, were collectors before, did it somehow shape your view already that <clears throat> that you uh, how to to sort out sort out the artist how to build up the the strategy for the gallery um, or how did you became then even before how did you became a collector what was the point of uh, being a collector and getting interested in art yeah I mean I think for me I I just wanted to, I mean I, I grew up partly in the UK and partly in Ethiopia so my formative years were in Ethiopia so when I you know, when I became an adult, started working, had a bit of money, I wanted to have the things that I remember growing up with around me. So mm -hmm. when I was collecting, I really didn't know what I was doing. There were there isn't a real gallery infrastructure in Ethiopia. So I would just come to studios, buy stuff that I thought I liked, I recognized, you know, that I had some sort of affinity to. So really, um, the, the reason why I, I sought out Maasai was because I wanted to make sense of my own collection. You know, what am I collecting? Why am I not seeing it at the fairs? Why am I not seeing it in London or New York or wherever? So yeah. for me, um, my my journey started really as a collector, but I also needed to be educated. So, yeah. and I think that's that's where Masai came in. And I think once we started working together, and 
I started learning more about um, the art history. And I think this is important about our gallery is that we, it's not just about the artist per se, it's really about um, a regional art history that we want to elevate because, you know, Africa seems young and fresh and new at the moment, but actually it's a very old place, <laughs> you know? Yes, yes. Ethiopia is a very old place and the art history goes all the way back to the fourth century BC. You know, there's, there's a lot of things to unpack here. So I think that it's, it's important, uh, it's part of our gallery ethos to really say, actually, yes, there's contemporary art, mm -hmm. but there was a modernist movement here. There was, you know, pre-modernist, here, you know, there was a lot of stuff here that needs to be elevated so yeah. that people can understand Africa, yeah. African art history regionally and deeply, you know. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tall order for a small gallery, for sure, but it's something that I think is important and that kind of needs to be replicated everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, I came at it as a, as a student, but for sure, Masai knew a lot more and, and you know, he, he's... I'll let you talk for yourself. Well, uh, you know, in my case, um, you know, I've been away from Ethiopia for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, so first time I came back, you know, to this country was 1992. And then the second time I came was 1996. That's when I really discovered, you know, through a friend uh, that there are these amazing artists in this country. And yes, it's a different time from when I lived here. And... Uh, it was, it was, you know, so captivating. All I did was, to be honest with you, was just yeah. buying, you know, without yeah. really thinking much about it because I saw the need and I and I really appreciated, you know, the artist and their sincere yeah, appreciation, you know, for someone to visit their studios, buy from them and all that. So mm -hmm. that started, you know, my journey. And yeah. frankly, you know, it wasn't like, you know, let me be smart about this and buy this particular artist and buy this, you know, from this other guy. It was just, you know what, at least I'm doing something that I'm enjoying and I'm helping some, you know, young artists. But in the process, you know, I got to learn and I kept doing that over and over again until I opened, you know, finally by, by all the the push, you know, that I was having from the artists, you know, to do something for them in the States. So I did that. And uh, that was early 2000, 2005, I think. So I got to learn a lot mm -hmm. about this place, about the history. I mean, I don't know how much you're, you know about Ethiopia, but this is a very old country. And, yeah. and our history goes way back. Yeah. And when you look at, you know, the art that was... Uh, really uh, left a lasting impression on this country and its artists today starts, you know, in the church. The church is where, you know, you when you come and visit Ethiopia, which I hope you do one day, you know, yes, when you go to a lot of these old churches, you know, you get to see amazing, um, you know, uh, frescoes and paintings in these, yes. in these churches that date back, you know, six, seven, four, five centuries. So that had a lot of influence on Ethiopian artists. And that was what we felt like, you know what, there's something special about this place that hasn't been shared. So we need to take this and share it with the rest of the world. Even our, you know, fellow Africans, you know, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. have, haven't had a lot of chance, you know, to come and visit this country and uh, see uh, its culture. And in particular, you know, what we do uh, at the moment. So mm -hmm. it's been, uh, it's been fun. It's been challenging. I moved yeah. back and, uh, here we are, you know, four years and a half. Uh, we get to talk to people like you. <laughs> <laughs> and and how is like you started them back first in Addis Ababa and then opened the, the, the London space or did you open it both together? Uh, what was the idea? Is it like rather showing it internationally or is it rather like first showing to the continent or to Ethiopia first? So what is the, the, the strategy? Uh, like... Um, how far you want to present the artists and show them? So, I mean, we, 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 we had so many discussions about kind of when, where and how, you know, because it could have been yes. almost anywhere because I lived in Europe, he lived in the US. But yes. I think in the end, we thought it sounded crazy at the time, but, you know, to just do it in Addis because yes. there is no infrastructure here, but yes. the artists are here. So it, we really wanted to create something... Oh, Ah. Hello? Oh, hello? Okay. 
Welcome to Addis. Like the lights are quite a bit. That was the so, power. <laughs> yeah, the power is hard. Sorry. Well, I hope it doesn't go off again. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we have to deal with a whole bunch of things like this that you guys never even have oof, to think about. Oof, okay, I can't. Um, <laughs> so what was I saying? Yeah, so we really want you know it could have been easier to open anywhere, but I, we really felt like we had to be closer to the to the artists here. You know, offer them things that just were not available here, like representation, like uh, just being able to go to the studio, conversate with them in their language, things like that. But also that we really needed, we really felt strongly about cultivating the local collector base. Because, yes. you know, we really, it just can't be just this exporting of, of culture. Like, I think people really need to understand the value and, and put the money where the, the culture is, if you like, yeah. locally, so that they can be some sort of basis. So it, we kind of had like a multi-pronged approach. Like we thought, okay, well, well, we have to open here and this is really the home of Addis Fine This is where it really begins. But yeah. almost immediately we had to do international work because exactly. that's, yeah. also the, that's also really important to kind of build that bridge. And I think, I think we're probably one of the very only ga ga galleries in the world that opened six weeks later we were at a fair like it was just such oof, a big okay. um yeah our very <laughs> first, armory. we were at the armory 2016. armory oof, oh wow <laughs> yeah but it, it was, uh, already like after six weeks uh, some, some and, yeah, we opened in january years, no? and in march we were in, at armory and it was i think it's fair to say it was a baptism by fire but you know it's uh it really made um it really put us on the map and it kind of really helped us to cut our teeth um and it also made us really understand the strategy really has to be both places. It can't be just local and it can't just be, you know, we're sitting in London and just ship, you know, just exporting. It kind of has to go uh, hand in hand if, if we, if you have, if, I mean, with the long term view that we have for it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And like, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. For me, it would be interesting, like as well, like uh, because we haven't had like a gallery with uh, several spots uh, in the talk now. How do you handle it? That's, for example, like um, the London space, the, the exhibitions. Do you think like okay, these are artists rather sells better in 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 London, or is it like uh, this one rather in Ethiopia? How do you somehow organize the exhibition plan and even uh, getting your collectors uh, to to buy from you then? I mean, in, initially, um, we started showing here first, and obviously, the next progression would be, you know, to take it, you know, to, you know, just go international with it, and yeah. we use that for our London space, but I don't know if you know this, we also have, you know, some artists that, that are not based here, you know, they, there's some in London, I mean, in, uh, in Europe, and uh, I mean, the for artists, you know, uh, by and large, you know, US. So, uh, but initially our plan was, to be honest with you, was, you know, this was where at this fine art true identity had to be anchored because yes. we were trying to do something that, um, I, I, I don't mean to sound cocky about it, but to, to, to do it the way we wanted to do it, you know, believe me, it's, it's not easy and no one has done it here. There are plenty of galleries here. You know, we enjoy some of them. Some of them are our friends, but no one has, no one has committed, you know, like us to do this both here, build it here and then, you know, take it outside of the country and see what happens. Um, that was quite challenging and uh, as far as you know how to pick the artist and all that I mean we've been lucky uh, we've spent time together uh, before we opened the gallery you know three four years so we knew who, who was doing what so that wasn't really the challenge you know to be honest with you it's just that okay. after a certain point some some artists um, we couldn't just we couldn't show them just here mm -hmm. simply because they they their word value appreciated so quickly 
you know, yeah. we can't do, you know, those exhibitions here in Addis because it just didn't make any sense any longer because actually it was collectors outside of the country that can afford to buy their works. So yeah. these are the kind of things, you know, that, are, that has been quite challenging for us, you know, to be honest with yeah. you, because we want people to collect here. We want the works to stay here. But unfortunately, you know, when it comes to the art, we still considered as a very young country that art appreciation is still you know still uh, you know new thing and uh, yeah. hopefully you know we will be able to uh, build that here also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's uh, it's it's been uh, it's been quite challenging to be honest with you yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and how do you find your artists? Do you let get uh, that you let's say visit them in their studios uh, around you? Do you know them already? Do you look on Instagram? What is how do you get to uh, to find your artists? I think by and large we knew who they were so because mm -hmm. as you know we 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 spent. Uh, three years researching, really kind of looking at what it is that we could do, but also who we could work with. So we already had a wish list, if you like, especially with the local artists. Mm -hmm. um, some of the younger artists we're finding as we go, you know, so um, Germa Berta, for example, a photographer, a young photographer that we work with. I mean, he, we found him actually on Instagram um, 2015, something like that. Um, yeah. But it, that's very rare because I think we already, you know, as a small gallery, we, we don't have a roster of 30, 40 artists. We, we know we're kind of still under 15 artists and we kind of yeah. go deep with their practice. And we already have, um, uh, we already knew who we wanted to work with. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Okay, 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 great. Okay, great. And uh, what would you do like if you would not uh, work as in a gallery or like would, what if, if you would, uh, let's say, do a completely different career? Uh, was, it always, <laughs> was it always your interest to work in art or would you, is it the only thing or would you probably uh, do something completely different? Well, in my, in my case, you know, I, I took a sabbatical, to be honest with you. After I closed the gallery, I was like, you know, um, maybe I should take some time off from this and, uh, you know, see, see what is there, you know, what's out there for me. And, and while I was enjoying my time, you know, Rakeb uh, showed up and uh, <laughs> the journey, <laughs> this journey began. But, I mean, in my case, uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I love to travel, so I probably would have been involved in in the travel business, but uh, thank God, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing now. <laughs> this is a lot more fun. <laughs> I mean, I... I was a management consultant, <laughs> and okay. this was my passion project that turned into, uh, you know, a career. So, yeah. to be honest, like, if you asked me would I ever give this up to go back to management consulting? I would no. say no. <laughs> so I don't know what I would do. I think even now, even if this doesn't, uh, if this doesn't go further, which we know it's going to go, but if it had to stop today, I think I'd be stuck. I'd, be, I'd have to look yeah, for something yeah, else creative to do. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes, yes. No, it's always interesting where the people are coming from because there are the people like who did it like completely from art historian through gallery, from yeah. gallery, mm -hmm. through gallery things like that. I'm going coming from the passion, so it's always interesting to 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 know uh, what what is the drive from the people and how did they get into it? Because everyone knows it's working in art is pretty tough, and it's tough, um, yeah. so uh, <laughs> it's always interesting and to know why the why and how and when the people took the risk uh, then the decision yeah. to to get into it. I think that's uh, for me. It's always very interesting. This, this was definitely a passion project that turned yeah. that completely turned our lives upside down. And I mean, it was just the, the testament to its success is that it was so needed, like, you know, for, for a gallery to just say, OK, I mean, there's, there's been a lot of sacrifices on our part, money, time, all of these things. But it's really important to kind of start at the bottom, if you like, you know, to, yeah. to start and to go deep and in a way, like one thing to mention about our gallery in, in Addis is that we, we almost we, you know, we, we act like uh, a social enterprise because we have to fulfill the commercial side, but also like the, the institutional side that's missing. So yeah. sometimes we do shows that we know we're not going to sell. 
yeah. uh, because yeah. people need to see them. The the students from the art school need to see them, uh, or even just the collectors need to be educated into seeing, you know. Yes. And yeah. there aren't many places for that for those curat you know cu curatorially uh, rigorous shows to happen. So we kind of it's a it's a real juggle. So when we say it's a struggle, it's just that. There isn't an ecosystem around us that can, you know, mm -hmm. that we can uh, support, uh, you know, can we can collaborate with or have support. We kind of are doing it mm -hmm. on our own in a way. Okay. So okay. it's um, it's Great. that's uh, that's an important thing to say. <laughs> Very cool. And like, how do you react now? Like, uh, I guess in uh, it's everywhere. Like, do through um, through the pandemic scene, how do you react on this? Most of the galleries doing online exhibitions. Uh, attending online fairs. How do you react on this from your gallery? Uh, I think Raku can speak, you know, on our, 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 uh, the work that we do outside of Ethiopia. But here, here in Addis, um, obviously we we've been closed. Um, you know, it's it's been quite quite a challenging time. Yep. Um, all this is new for everybody. Um, so we depend heavily on what we do outside yes. uh, through the London uh, uh, you know space but uh, now you know luckily we had a plan uh, an expansion plan believe it or not okay, here in great. Ethiopia and and um, we we have started working on that um, it might take six months it might take a year but uh, that's that's the project that we're working on right now mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things that we want to do here mm -hmm. besides just you know having a gallery space mm -hmm. uh, it's more or less you know trying to build a community so you know that has been <laughs> kind of a blessing in disguise to be honest with you because we have this free time now uh like is here in Addis, so we can work on that but outside of ethiopia i mean she yeah. can uh, so so luckily, uh, we upgraded our entire kind of online. We've always had a very strong online presence because, you know, yes. we opened a gallery in an obscure place. So we've always used, um, uh, you know, digital platforms to, to reach people, you know, Artsy, Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, ArtLogic, all of that. But luckily, we just upgraded everything in September. So... Yeah. You know, wow. we, we were kind of ready uh, for, for it, in a way. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, the shift to online, I think, is always, I mean, online has always been important to us, but it's mm -hmm. it's been this whole shift, like with everybody doing it, it's been uh, an, an interesting thing to, to witness. Um, certainly with the fairs, like this year was actually quite a, a big year for us because we had a lot of things planned for the international space. We were moving mm -hmm. to a new space called... Um, uh, Cromwell Place in, in South Kensington is mm -hmm. communal gallery gallery space that was supposed to open in May and we got into freeze for the first time. I think we're wow. probably the first gallery in sub-Saharan Africa to, apart from uh, South so Africa to have mm -hmm. ever been accepted it's to freeze anything. so wow. it was like it was a major year for us and we were going to do Art Cologne for the first mm -hmm. time. There was a number of things happening. So in a way with all of the fairs going online and us being able to collaborate with them has mm -hmm. has helped us really refine our kind of online online uh, approach. Mm -hmm. But I think even for the London Zoo, it's given us some time to really get to know our our collectors, like really get to know them one to one. You know, mm -hmm. it's just been a one to one outreach um, mm -hmm. time. It's given us time to just really see what what's working and what's not working, and kind of you know. Well, just to test our strategy and just to give us some time because I mean we're only four years old and we've just yeah. had one big year after another and we haven't had a chance to just you know get just take some time out and say oh you know what's working what's not working yes. what can we do better yes. so that's what we're using this time for um, and I, I mean even this conversation you know wouldn't have happened if this was our big year and we were traveling around in fairs because exactly. I, I just wouldn't have had time to even listen to one of your talks, let alone. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's, I just, know. I know. it's just one of those I wouldn't have even the time to start it, so that's <laughs> Exactly. <Yeah. laughs>
So exactly. And do you think, like, do you think, um, because we had it in one of our uh, previous talks, do you think it's even like a chance, like uh, when you have a very good online presence, that you that you as a gallery, let's say, somehow can save some costs, like attending fairs, uh, let's say, doing shorter exhibitions in your galleries, that you can might, um, let's say do some kind of restructuring of your 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 gallery system i mean i i think i think uh, the online strategy has always been important to us but mm -hmm. it is extremely difficult for us to convert sales online if it's mm -hmm. just online because yes. we're young gallery most of the artists that we're showing people have never seen before yeah. so that emotional connection when somebody walks into a room and they see i've had this a mess for us you know it that that's actually quite an important part of the whole yeah. process yeah. um and i mean i'll give you an example the the fair that we just did the freeze fair it you know we made a couple of sales eventually but it was extremely difficult because those works need to be experienced rather than of course you know, it's so difficult. So even though we had like, um, you know, we had all of our tools, you know, our videos, our, you know, our artist talk, everything, mm -hmm. it was still really difficult for people to say, I, I get it or I feel it or, you know, I'm going to take a risk on it. Because, you know, young young artists are, are, you know, by and large risk. I mean, on that same platform for Freeze, I think on the first day, yeah. the big galleries made $5 million yes. dollars yeah. in one day. So... But for us, you know, in the in the frame section or younger galleries, it's it's harder to convert these sales if you're just online. I think there's there's no substitute for seeing the work or yeah. falling in love with the work or experiencing the work or just even having a one to one conversation with the curator or the gallerist or the, the artist. It's yes, there's yeah. something there that just cannot be replicated. But I, I still feel like the online, uh, all of these tools that we are now developing, I think they're here to stay. And I think they'll just be a complement well, to what we do, like to everything that we do. Um, yeah. and, 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 you know, as we grow and as, as we get more and more collectors and as people get to know our program and our artists, potentially, you know, just doing an online show and you know, converting sales might be easy. Like, for example, today we opened a, a four-work show for Tadde Semesvin. Mm -hmm. Lots of people are looking for his work. Maybe that will, you know, that kind of stuff might work. But for really young artists that are new to the market, mm -hmm. people need to artist. see the work, I think. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I guess so, too. And, um, and how do you think like will change it, that you you said like it will add something to the to the current status? Do you think as well that might change the whole situation of the fairs? I guess especially like uh, like let's say everything was very pretty packed through collectors. You know, mostly most collectors rather let's say reluctant to travel during these times. Mm -hmm. uh, don't you think that this might change as well the whole the system um, of old structure fairs? Yeah, I mean, I, I, we, we seriously think, you know, it will, it will change somewhat. Um, what happened, you know, before this is not going to come back in a year or two. I mean, we all know that. And for young galleries, you know, going to all these fairs, especially in our case, you know, we were doing a lot, you know, six, seven, eight fairs a year. Yes. And that obviously helped us grow. That helped us, you know, get the kind of clients that we've been seeking out. But unfortunately, it's also very expensive, and and, and it can't be sustained. So there will there will be some change. I mean, we don't know. Uh, I know for sure that we're not going to do eight fairs in a year. That you know, that's that's not going to happen. <laughs> but there will be other models. We don't know. Um, the f fairs might have to rethink this. Um, uh, it's not easy for the fairs. You know, they've been great, you know, for us, especially in young galleries. I mean, let's be honest. But yeah. there has something, I hope something is brewing, to be honest yeah. with you. You know, that's what we're looking forward to because, mm. you know, just doing it the old way, it's, it's, mm. it's not going to, it's not going to happen. And plus, even, you know, the way, 
travel is going to change. We don't know. You know, I mean, fares by and large. You know, a lot of people have to travel. You know, to these fares. So the unknown is is, is so big. You know, it's very it's hard. You know, for us just to sit here and say, you know, this is exactly what we yeah. want to do. And uh, yeah. If you want. I think there were just uh, the pressure for us, like, you know, the fairs were a lifeline similar to the kind of the online thing we opened here. So we had to do a lot of international work in the fairs, but um, it felt like there were just so many f new fairs were popping up every so often. You know, it's just too many fairs, I think. And mm -hmm. potentially there could be, I mean, we're seeing a lot of kind of collaborative models with, you know, all of the galleries in LA kind of setting up their own online thing and potentially there needs to be some sort of consolidation affairs yeah. maybe um and certainly i mean i just think that affairs in general just being a bit more um supportive to the younger gallery because you know we're the new we're the ones bringing the diversity the new the small galleries are the ones that are bringing the interest if you like yeah. and um because it doesn't matter where they are i mean gagosian and whoever they're going to sell Exactly. They're gonna sell, so it, it's it the, the the kind of the business model doesn't necessarily work so much for the younger galleries, and you know, fairs need to to look at that because exactly. it, it's it, I don't know, it was getting a little bit boring. Don't you think you see the same? You go to any fair, any big fair, you'd see the same galleries doing. Yes. Yes. You know, and very small number of. And even sometimes, like especially for the collectors, it was not even for yeah. me, it was not it was not so important to go to the fairs. Because most of the stuff got sold anyhow before the fair, exactly. so yeah, through PDFs and 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 so I, I spend my budget already in, in advance, and um, of course it's nice to see them, and maybe you have a surprise on the fair, and it's rather yeah. than um, connecting to people, meeting the Garys, uh, yeah. meeting pe person you 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 maybe just know from from uh, internet or from mail or whatever. So yeah. um, that's rather more rather a connection than than. Than really finding the the next yeah. uh, spot, which which was was mostly anyhow either like on reserve or sold or stuff like this. So most of the stuff yeah. was sold in advance. And I think this kind of might change again as well with the waiting list. Um, I guess uh, mm -hmm. I will ask this as well. Uh, that mm -hmm. it might change um, the system anyhow. And what do you think? Like from your time, from your point of view, what will it mm -hmm. do to the waiting lists? Because this was a big. It's a not problem, yeah. but a big discussion for, for, for long years. Yeah. I mean, we're young gallery, so I mean, we, we don't necessarily utilize waiting lists unless we really have to. You know, we have, we have young artists who produce enough work to meet the demand, and actually our job is to create more demand. But we ha we, we, we've got a couple of artists that just don't produce enough to meet the demand. Like um, mm -hmm. Adis Gazaheng is one of those artists because his work just takes an absolute age to make. You know, he has to do collage, then it's mm -hmm. ink. And, you know, he, he you know, I think 10 works a year, maybe, if he can produce a decent size. So, I mean, for him, we, ha we have to you know, when we can't meet uh, the demand, we have to have a waiting list. And similarly to with Tadessa, um, he, you know, he's one of our most important artists. Uh, so, and he's in his 60s, so he doesn't produce it as much as we need. And therefore, we do have to um, hold waiting lists uh, at that time. We also have another artist that we can't, we've worked with before, Niri Tekle. She has a waiting list because again, mm -hmm. so okay. unless we really need to, we don't, we can't really, we don't, we're not in the, in that category of gallery that can afford to just say, oh no, no, you know, we don't have any yeah. work when we have like a bunch yeah. in the back. So, because we, we need to, we need to, our job we feel is to create demand for this work, for this work. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but for the other guy, maybe it might change the whole kind of mm -hmm. this a game <laughs> that's Great. played yes. between yes. Them. Yes. 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 yes, absolutely. Okay, uh, before I hand over to the community, the community can already type in some questions. Uh, my last question for this now would be like, how do you, let's say, how? what is your next plan out of uh, this pandemic scene? You said you have a big project. Um, what will change to you and um, how do you uh, want to be placed or seen in future? What is your, your idea and and your um, next thing, big thing, uh, your next exhibition or artist show? I think it's two things, really. So I, um, for, for London, I think 
everything that we had planned for 2020 will just happen a little bit later. So we'll move into Chromo Place. We really needed a kind of a, fe- a flexible place where people can just, uh, you know, collectors can just come drop in, say hello, talk to us. And then we also have our, our um, uh, international program there. Um, and then um, I think here is where it's, we, we want to do the biggest work. And um, as I alluded to it before, uh, we want to expand so that we can be both a, a commercial space, but also we want to build some sort of institutional identity. Because I think, you know, we, we have to start somewhere. So we just decided, OK, we'll open a gallery. And, you know, we're, we, we're, we have to prove the business case for the commercial case. But then also they're, they're just, there's just a gap in institutional um, support for young artists or artists mm-hmm. that are coming out of the art school or even the art school itself. I mean, we have an art school that um, has been open since the early 50s. It's been doing an amazing job creating all of these artists and educating them throughout all of the upheavals of this country through communism through the you know lots of different changes have happened but it's been it's been there um mm-hmm. but we want to support them we want to uh, do archival work we want to do research so there's a lot of kind of non-profit institutional work that we really want to do and that is our phase two really that's kind of the next um the next big thing for um Addis fine arts mm-hmm. as a we need like a non-profit institutional face to, to complement what we've managed yeah. to do commercially, I think. Yeah, there, in addition to that, you know, we also want to build a residency program here because at the moment, oh, okay, great, um, great. you know, there's, there's such a demand, uh, especially from our fellow Africans, you know, who really want to come you know, to Ethiopia, there's uh, a lot of history involved, you know, with this country that a lot of Africans, you know, um, see in Ethiopia as this country that has stayed independent uh, uh, for, a, you know, forever. And yeah. and uh, the history uh, has made it such an attractive place where, mm-hmm. you know, today Addis is considered as the political capital of Africa. So there's a lot of African artists, you know, on this continent mm-hmm. who do want to come and, and, mm-hmm. and, and do residency programs. So that's one thing that we want to develop, you know, because it's Great. it's such a, a way for, for, for our gallery, you know, to be reaching out a little bit more outside of our comfort zone mm-hmm. and... Um, you know, there's 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 things that we want to do here, and uh, and that's one of them. And uh, hopefully, you know, we take this time, you know, to build, you know, all these things, you know, that we have planned. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. And do you like, let's say, select the, the artist for your residency, or can even uh, people apply, like artists, apply for the residency? Um, what is the idea behind it? Well, we're we're a bit, you know, we're we're you know, your question is a bit ahead of our time. Uh, uh, but uh, we we try to be as inclusive as as possible, uh, especially reaching out, you know, to artists, you know, within our neighborhood. Um, that means, you know, the Horn of Africa. Uh, so we will develop, you know, these programs in due time. Um, but our, our are, it's a very ambitious plan, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. So we need a lot of help, especially from the government side. You know, they, they need to, you know, realize that, you know, there's something, you know, special that we're trying to do here. It's not only just, you know, a commercial venture where, you know, we create these successful artists, but yeah. more importantly, you know, we want to build, uh, keep building, you know, the history of the art, you know, from this country. So. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, it's, uh, it's a total order. This project amazing. Yeah. We'll keep you up, we'll keep you updated. Uh, I already saw you some great questions. Uh, like, um, are there any plans to sell some prints for engaged younger collectors? Prints. Um, prints and we, for me, it was as well always like a good start to get because I started with editions yeah. as well um, before I bought my first piece of art. Um, is there any idea like you want to do yeah. to reach out to young collectors? So I think that as a young gallery, we have we we definitely want young collectors to start collecting from us and grow with us. So mm-hmm. 
because of that, we have really young artists yes. and artists that, you know, uh, you know, if I say, if I mention a couple, Tzita Burhanu, for example, a young mm -hmm. female painter, um, three years out of the university, you know, works are selling for maybe 3,000 to 4,000 pounds, you know. Mm -hmm. So these are like super affordable um, uh, price points for young collectors. But we also have, um, we also work with a couple of photographers mm -hmm. where they... <clears throat> Although they're prints, although we edition them very, very small edition, like seven edition of seven, but really affordable works, you know, under two thousand dollars, under a thousand dollars. These are the things that we think that um, are affordable, and so that we can attract the young, the young collectors into into the program. Mm -hmm. And even at the top end of our of our um, of our roster, you know, we don't really have anything that's more than thirty thousand. Pounds, you know, so forty thousand dollars is probably the highest. So I feel like we're a young gallery that really wants to have um, young collectors follow us and, and work and, and be uh, be with it, you know grow with us, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in terms of so there there is a range, but in terms of like prints, say for example of Tadis or Mespin or whatever, I think that we need to make sure that they get to the right level of recognition and. Um, to, to the right place in art history before we can start doing that, you know. So, so we we tend not to do that with the some of the painters like Tadesa and Addis and Mary Coco. You know, these are it's a bit too soon. It's a bit too soon, and also like mm -hmm. these are artists that are actually really accomplished and that have had a, a career. It's just that mm -hmm. they weren't they they haven't been highlighted globally. So yeah. we need to get them to where they need to be first. I think. Great. Yes. 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 Okay, great. And um, here's another great question. How are you cultivating a collector base in Ethiopia? Um, you already have probably some, but how do you, let's say, expand this? And how do you get more well, people? Well, that, that has been the challenge, you know, to be honest with you. When we opened, um, we did have quite a few people who were buying from us because the prices were accessible, let's be honest. Um, but what has happened in the last, you know, four and a half years is the fact that um, our collector base, you know, started kind of shrinking locally uh, because our artists are doing so well uh, that in some cases, you know, they have reached a point where we can't even show their work. It doesn't make any sense, you know, commercially at least, not to show their work here. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, you know, we do it because we feel like it's important, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's costly. So we are really trying so hard you know to build this community yeah. the, the culture of collecting in Ethiopia especially here in Addis is relatively new let's yeah. be honest I mean people have been buying our works but it's just go to the gallery just buy whatever you like or they kind of like fairs organized annually you know they just go there and buy and it's just <laughs> impulsive you know, purchases and and uh, a lot of people have bought a lot of work like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yet when you, you know, when you go through a gallery, you know, there's a lot of vetting that we do. There's a lot of things that we do with an artist. You know, it's not just, you know, let's just show the work, you know, and, and send it wherever, you know, we're yeah. trying to build, you know, we're shaping careers. So yeah. in order to educate you know, the collectors here, um, there's a lot of things that we constantly try. You know, we we invite them. Uh, we've tried uh, to actually talks. To do talks so, and whatnot. And um, also just take them to fairs as well. Like, to, like yeah. you know, we've taken a few of our, our, uh, of our collectors. collectors here to our Dubai just to see, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, it's also like a, a level of education uh, about the global world in art that need, needs, needs to be done for some of our yeah. collectors here. It's not, I don't, you know, I, I think there's no lack of money here. No. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not, you know, I think, I think we're the fastest growing economy in the world for the last decade or something. So there yeah. people are constantly, you know, there's uh, people are being added to the millionaire class, if you like, but it's really about kind of, okay, is this important to me? And, exactly. you know, is this important yeah. and why should I spend on this painting when I can buy a car or, yes. you know, or yes. watch or whatever, you know, so it's, you know, we're still there. 
Yeah, and how do you convince them? Because especially like uh, as well in the beginning, although might a lot of people love art and would like to have a painting, yeah. they're rather reluctant and, and, and especially in the beginning to, to purchase a certain amount, like as you said, like for a car uh, on a piece of art, which is, let's say, uh, they're not drivable, you can't eat it, stuff like this. So, um, you know, so yeah. how do you convince then new new collectors to, to getting interested into art? We have to educate. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's our, our biggest mission right now here locally, yeah. to be honest with you. It's inviting people like you to come. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and we can organize, you know, uh, what we think will be an ideal way of, you know, reaching out to our fellow Ethiopians who have the money, you know, they might have, you know, the, uh, the interest, but yeah. it's just, you know, they need to learn, they need to see why you, you know, or others, you know, who do this yeah. uh, and understand, you know, the importance of what you do. And yeah. Yeah. It's not easy, uh, yes. you know. It's it's. We just started. We we have a we have a lot of time on our hands, but yeah, we 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 we, we really have to yeah, knock on a lot of doors and uh, yes. let yes. people know and understand and learn that yeah. it's not just a piece of work that you just hang on a wall. You know, there's a there's a lot of things you know that should go into buying an art piece. Mm. Yes, but I, I have to say that we. Uh, all of our shows here are extremely well attended. Like, you know, people, they've become kind of these spectacles where people come and they really want to see and they want to, you know, each show is something different. So I think we've at least, we've intrigued people and we've managed to get at least a small pool of people that are willing and, you know, they will then educate their friends. And that's the, that's the hope and, and say, oh, you know, I bought this and now it's being shown at in London or, you know, somebody's going to donate to, you know, this, this, you know, we just educate them about kind of how the, the art world works. Yeah. Uh, because I think Ethiopia is quite insular in, in it, in its just general way of being. Um, yeah. And we don't necessarily reach out to, and we don't necessarily understand how the rest of the art world works here. Um, so that's, that's been one of our challenges, but I think it, it's, it's, yeah, as, as somebody just said, it's, it's a shift in mindset, you know, it's about, yes, exactly. let's, yes. let's, uh, but it's, hap I think it's happening. It's how it is. It's happening. I it's mean, definitely. We see it. Uh, I think yeah. the they have the money, um, yeah. uh, by and large, uh, it's just that, you know, just stepping out of their comfort zone yeah. Yeah. And, and, and understanding that, you know, this is very global and, uh, and they also have competition from you or, you know, somebody sitting in, in uh, the country. U.S. or, you know, they have competition. They, if they want some of these good works in their collections yes. or in the, to just stay home, they have yes. to they have to buy. Yeah, yes. yeah and, they, and they see, you know, they see that prices have appreciated, you know, considerably. They could have bought a tab that's, uh, you, know, you know, three and a half years ago. What for like five thousand yes. dollars? You know what we're selling today for twenty, thirty thousand pounds. Yes. So it's it's coming. Uh, maybe not fast enough for us yes. as a business, but but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's happening because you know at the end of the day, I'll be honest with you, we want a lot of the works you know to stay here. You know that's that's also very important. You know we don't yes. want to you know wake up you know twenty years, thirty years from now and uh, our art history has a big void because we succeeded in, you know, doing really well commercially outside of Ethiopia. You know, we don't yeah. want that to happen. You know, yeah. you know we, we also want to see, you know, works, you know, stay here. And, yeah. stay here. Uh, local. And local, yeah, because at yeah. the end of the day, you know, collectors, you know, some, you know, eventually will request, you know, museum and, uh, mm -hmm. and that's also important. Yeah. yeah. So, Great, 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 very cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, would um, if you want to convince now, like a new collector, like a young collector especially, what would you recommend? Can you give some advices how they should start um, to uh, to a collection of art? I think research. You, I think, I think yeah. you just have to start with research because I mean, especially. Especially in the Africa space, because at the moment there's a lot of hype, you know, people are really yeah. interested in it. Um, but Africa is not one place, you know, it's like it's so many different places, if you like, you know, art historically, 
for example, like we have no real connection to South Africa, for example. So mm. you really have to do your research. Um, I think you should find a young gallery. If you're a young collector, you need to be like in touch with lots of young galleries yeah. that can teach you because the young galleries, most by and large, are um, set up with people that have done the research like way before you, you know? Yeah. And they, they see something there that, you know, you you want to know. So, you know, they yeah. a lot of people, like a lot of young gallery gallerists will have a multitude of knowledge that you need to like extract mm -hmm. from, from, um, from them. And from there, I think you then you have to use your heart. Like it depends on what speaks to you. It depends on what makes you feel happy you know you walk into a room and if you feel something when you see a painting that's that's usually a good sign I mean that's how I used to collect um but I think just knowing what you're collecting also is really important which is not what I did I just collected what I love to see but actually after a while I had to say to myself well what about what is this what why is this important you know so yeah. Research is good. You need to make friends with lots of young galleries. Yes. And I mean, take a risk. I think you just need to yeah, exactly. you need to support the young galleries and young artists. Yeah. And I. Yeah. Especially like when your uncle lecture is like, uh, it was always hard to get access uh, and uh, somehow get, let's see, uh, through the opaque market uh, mm -hmm. because. Okay, now it's a little bit better, uh, but in the beginning, of course, I had the trouble as well. Like, of course, younger galleries, it was like, let's say, good to uh, to access and getting communication, uh, and rather the mid and the big galleries, they rather yeah. let's ah, uh, thank you very much, uh, we we'll put you on the waiting list, stuff like yeah. that. So, uh, um, I guess as well, like doing your research, starting with smaller galleries, and then yeah. somehow teach teach get taught and, and teach yourself yeah. uh, and then step by step if your collection is growing then you can as well let's say get uh, better yeah. access to other galleries or to other artists which you would, would love to as well so i think it's definitely, yeah, exactly. definitely much more better yeah make make a habit of going to exhibitions you know you yes. have, you'll meet like-minded people yeah. you know reach out to young collectors you know Especially when you go to exhibitions, you know, really, uh, it's, mm. it's a wonderful setting where, you know, you go there, you meet people that you, you probably have never seen before, and you've seen works that, you know, you might not have seen before. And if you repeat that continuously, you know, you'll develop something within you. I mean, it, it's not something that just comes naturally, you know, yeah. it's, it, it, it's, it's a lot of time. I mean, me and her have spent, you know, a long time, you know, I used to just go to studios and see works, you know, every day when I used to come here. And uh, yeah. and eventually, you know, you, you, you learn a lot. I mean, obviously, when we both go back and look at, you know, some of the things that we were buying, you know, <laughs> yeah. we want to buy, <laughs> you know, but... But you know you, that that's how it, that's the only way you can learn. It can't just you know. Uh, yes, I mean if some have a lot of money, they can hire advisors, you yeah. know, yes, uh, yes, and yes. whatnot. But yes. I personally feel like you know you should engage, you know, the galleries uh, a little bit more than just yeah. have somebody to do the work for you. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean that's it's not a you know it's not a bad thing. It's just that you know you want to own what you buy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, yours. it's part of you, I think, it's sometimes. Me. I feel like yes. a lot of the things I love are just a part of me, they're a reflection of me. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I think that as well, like sometimes, like the, the art, uh, no, no, the, the collectors who have, let's say, a smaller budget and a smaller uh, pocket, they're rather like, more passionate about collecting and rather yeah. than very deep into it because they have to decide yeah. carefully exactly. uh, than, than, than uh, uh, someone who has uh, like an open pocket and can spend uh, on every price amount uh, and they rather they don't care what they buy. Um, so yeah, Exactly. But you know that like a yeah. young collector, you know, we, you know, they might not be able to pay the full amount. Exactly. But, you know, we can make plans, you yeah. know, because yeah. if we see in them, you know, the interest and the desire, uh, those are the kind of really collectors, you know, uh, young galleries can, can yes. appreciate and, um, and, you know, help them, you know, through this journey. Yeah. So, uh, and I mean, the idea is that we have young artists or under underrepresented artists 
that will stick with us, grow with us as we grow. And then also we need the other side. We need young collectors that will, you know, be our patrons, really. Like, you know, and as they grow, as we grow, they grow with us. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it becomes, you know, it's all about ecosystems here. It's like you, mm-hmm. one gallery cannot do it by itself and an artist cannot do it by himself. And a yes. collector really will get into trouble if they, most collectors will get into trouble if they decide they're just going to buy, like I did, you know, mm-hmm. just from what, yeah. whatever, from studios and so on. Yeah. But, um, so it, need, it needs the whole, you know, it needs all, all sides needs to kind of grow together, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I think we have time for a last question. Here's an interesting one. Uh, we have a booming market in West South Africa and North Africa. What are your thoughts on projections of East Africa? Yeah, so we're super underrepresented. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, yes. And I mean, that was, yeah, that was part of the this burning desire and like mm. the, all of the sacrifice so many years that we put into because <laughs> <laughs> we were just really yeah we were missing in action I mean I just think that but the, I mean I think the irony is that because we have this amazing art school here in Ethiopia and there's also an amazing an old art school in Uganda Makerere mm. um And also there's a vibrant scene in Kenya, for example. Sudan. Sudan, all of these. That it's just, it's kind of incongruent that the fact that, you know, East Africa is not um, represented enough. But I think, I mean, it's, we're here. um, We have colleagues in in the, in Kenya and Uganda that we consider colleagues. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're. Uh, yeah, we're coming. We're coming for it. But That's I think in the end, in the end, in the end, it as well like a unique, uh, a unique uh, selling point. You know, like we have less competition uh, rather than like in uh, in 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 uh, Cape Town in uh, South Africa, uh, where you have like a lot of already very established galleries, like uh, all the yeah. big three and four, and uh, it's rather harder to get somehow yeah. uh, being established, and then you. Uh, Right from the beginning, you're already uh, one of the established ones, and you have yeah. a unique uh, selling point. I think it's no, definitely. I mean, if we if we had opened almost anywhere in the world, we probably wouldn't be here today in terms of just yes. like recognition and also yes. and, and, and and things like that as a gallery. But mm-hmm. but as an ecosystem, we're still way behind South Africa. You yeah. know, like for the artist, um, yes. because it's just there is there aren't enough places to show work. And yes. therefore, there aren't enough places to engage uh, the collector. And then there are, so there's so many missing parts of the puzzle that, yes, okay, we've managed to, to get where we are. But actually, when you look at the, you know, when we, when we think about East Africa's ecosystem, mm-hmm. there's still mm-hmm. a lot of gaps and mm-hmm. they need to be, they need aligned. to be aligned. Somebody saying my question about the Middle East artists. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I just have to, we have just three oh, minutes, so I want oh, to sorry, sorry, okay. it out. No <laughs> because some, uh, sometimes like Instagram is just shutting just me down. Cut, so I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I want to give you as well the chance, like uh, all the interesting people and the community, where can they find um, or can contact you? Of course, your website, Addis Fine Art. And, yes. um, and also Instagram. Your... We're always, we're very active on Instagram. Instagram. It's just Addis Fine Art. The handle's Addis Fine Art. Um, mm-hmm. And our website, you can you can get in touch. You can get. We're both on Instagram as well. You can contact us directly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we're very we're we're online, <laughs> and okay. everybody okay. seems to be online. So you can definitely uh, okay. get in touch with us. Yeah. yeah. If this stays longer, I would be delighted if we can continue this talk. It was very, very interesting. And um, um, so we Thank just you. have one and a half minutes. Uh, as again, I want to not shut it down in a, shut, in a hard way. So I'm very sure. thankful for this uh, this great talk. It was super interesting. And, thank um, you very much. For, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for inviting us. Thank and we really enjoyed yeah, your is... whole series as well. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you so yeah. much. Yeah. I will continue. You're doing amazing. Talk. We'll be next 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 week. Uh, next week. So I hope you okay. will join. Thank no, you. No, we so will. We will. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, you okay. so much. Bye. Congratulations. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.